Hey, home bakers, it's Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week is the one you've all asked me for. Uh, it's gonna get heavy for a bit. Are you ready? Let's do it. Hey, you guys, welcome back. It's nice to see you here every single week for another weekly bread making tip. And today is something else to do with sourdough. And let me come clean with you for just for a minute, okay? I've been putting off this video. I've been putting it on the back burner and putting it off because sourdough is a big deal. And I always feel like it's the simplest thing in the world when you start doing it. But when you try and translate that into words, and when I try and translate what I feel is happening into words, to communicate effectively to you, to be able to keep that simple, that is not as simple. So I must admit, I do apologize, I've been putting this off. I haven't been wanting to tackle it because it's a big deal. But this week I'm gonna talk about, finally, fitting sourdough bread into your schedule. Now the sourdough bread making process is long. It's really long, but you know what? What we actually have to do is very, very minimal. There's a few instances where you have to be around and the rest of the time you can mess about and do whatever you like. I always think that sourdough is such a simple process when you start doing it, like I said earlier. It really, really is. There's a lot of time for you to sort of hang about and let the dough do its own thing while you go and do your own thing. And that's really important because you don't want to have to sit down with a pencil and figure out what time this and what time that to get somebody else's recipe into your schedule. And I feel like this is probably why I've been putting this off for so long because what I'm effectively doing here is shoehorning my recipe into your schedule, which is a tricky thing to do, right? Because the only reason my recipe is my recipe that you'll see on my blog is because that fits in to my schedule. I made it that way to fit in with my schedule from a beginner's point of view. And so therefore, in quite an illogical manner, this video is about shoehorning that into your schedule, which may or may not be so easy to do. What I try and do with my videos is to give you an education of the process, and I've spoken about sourdough a lot recently. I feel like this is gonna do the last sourdough one I'm gonna do for a while because these are really, really hard to do. <laughs> if you have an education of the process and understanding of the process, then you can come up with your own recipe that fits in with your schedule. And the reason that recipe is that recipe, the reason your sourdough comes out the way it comes out is because that's what you can do with your schedule. That's the easiest thing. If you know what you're doing, you can make a recipe to fit into your schedule. Right, let's go through with this, shall we? For the purposes of this video, so it's not nine days long, we're gonna assume that your starter is already happy, is already excited, you fed it yesterday, and it's already good to go. It's increasing in volume, and it's producing gas bubbles. Both those two things, it's good to go. We'll assume that's already happened, uh, and you're already ready to go. Now what you need to do is figure out those stages when you need to be with your dough. There's a lot of time when you don't need to be with your dough. When the yeasts are multiplying and the dough is fermenting, you don't need to be around at all. But there are a few key instances where you need to be there. I'm gonna go and get the blackboard now and that means it's gonna get serious. So assuming that your starter is ready to go and also assuming you are using my recipe from my blog, let's start with that as our foundation. There are a few moments where you need to be around. One is mixing the dough. You cannot mix the dough if you are not there. The next times you need to be around are stretching and folding the dough throughout that fermentation period. Then, after that, you need to pre-shape the dough and then you need to shape it. That's four times, right? That's four stages of the process that you need to be there, right? Mixing, stretching and folding, pre-shaping and shaping. After you've shaped your dough and put it into the basket, you can leave it into the fridge for ages. It doesn't matter. After that, you just put it into the fridge and you bake it whenever you got time. So let's forget that bit for a minute. That's the most flexible part. So let's talk about the fermentation period in between mix 
and pre-shape. Okay, in between those two stages, that's your bulk fermentation, okay? That's the biggest part of fermentation in your dough, where you just leave it. You just have to be around every once in a while for stretching and folding. And I spoke about this in another video before, which, which I was talking about. Fermentation is the multiplication of yeast. That's time. Fermentation is time to let the dough do its thing. And the stretch and folding is what you've got to do to build the structure. Those two things combined is going to make your sourdough a success. It's as simple as that. And if you consider success as I consider success, a loaf that's puffed and a loaf that's hold a nice shape, that is what we're going for, right? So in between these two stages, we've got the fermentation period. Oh, that broke. Fermentation period, and if you look closely at my recipe, you'll realize that that, in my recipe, is 5.5 hours. That's total time between mix and pre-shape is 5.5 hours. That's when the dough is fermenting and doing its own thing, right? The beauty of sourdough bread is that it is slow moving. It needs all this time. And because it needs all the time and it's slow moving, in a temperature in my house, at room temperature, in between 18 and 23 degrees normally, it is slow moving. It's taking its time fermenting and puffing up. All we gotta do, as it says in my recipe, is put the stretch and folds somewhere in between here. But here comes the first customizable part of your recipe. This period, you can stretch it out. Because your dough is slow moving and between 18 and 23 degrees, I would quite happily stretch this out to eight hours. And do try, if it's cooler in your home, take it to 10 hours if you want to. This is the sort of leeway that we've got. So let's put here eight hours. Just to be sure that that is the customizable range. Just to be sure. You may be able to take it further, but for the purposes of this, eight hours, you're pretty safe. Throughout this eight hour period, we need three stretch and folds before we get to the pre-shape. And that's building the structure that we spoke about. So in my recipe, let's use this as a timeline, this part here. In my recipe, there's one pretty close to the beginning, about half an hour in there, and then there's one two hours in, and one two hours later, there and there. So that's pretty evenly spaced out along that line. Stretch and fold, there, stretch and fold, stretch and fold, pre-shape, right? Where you put those stretch and folds uh, is up to you, and this is the second customizable part of your sourdough bread. Where you choose to do those stretch and folds doesn't really matter. It does have an effect on the final crumb structure, blah, blah, blah of the bread. But if we're going for success, a puff and a good shape, it doesn't really matter where you put them. So let's say for argument's sake, you're going out for the day. You're gonna take five hours out of the middle of your day to go out and, I don't know what you do, you take the kids to the park, have a picnic, have a cup of coffee with a friend, and then come home again later. You've mixed your dough, that's stage one, you need to be around to mix your dough. And then, let's take those stretch and folds away and put a new line. Then, let's say you mix your dough. It's quite nice to do the first stretch and fold about half an hour through the process, right at the beginning of the fermentation to start building structure. So let's do that first one quite near the top, about half an hour in, as it says in my recipe anyway. Then you go out for the day, five hours, five and a half hours. That takes us up to six hours fermentation. You come home, you fold your dough around about here. And then you leave it for another hour. Now we're seven hours in and you do another one here. That's an hour now before the pre-shape stage, the shape, and then put it into the basket and rest it for however long you want, doesn't matter. That's the second customizable part. The first customizable part is this fermentation time of stretching that out to help you out. And the second customizable part is this stretch and fold procedure, which you can pretty much put 
in wherever you want on this time scale. I hope it comes across as clearly as it comes across in my head. There's one more thing I want to talk to you about before we finish up, right? Another customizable part of your sourdough, which is your actual recipe itself. Once you realize that the quantity of starter is responsible for the speed of the puff, you can change the quantity of starter in your recipe. And let me explain what I mean, right? Sometimes if I'm in need of a sourdough bread for a class or for a demonstration at a food festival or whatever, I need that sourdough ready for that particular thing, right? Whatever I've got in the meantime, I can't take two days off, I can't take 48 hours off in order to make a sourdough to prepare it so it's ready in time for that one demonstration. That just doesn't logically work out. I need to customise the process in order for that sourdough bread to be ready on that day at that moment when I need it. And so this is what I do. For example, if I need, if I've got a whole day away, if I'm taking a whole day out uh, and I, I can't take my dough with me, I've got no facilities, or if I need to do it overnight, to do this fermentation thing overnight unattended, what I can do is change the quantity of starter in the recipe. I can take that starter right down for like, instead of 100 grams, what it says in my recipe, maybe, 25 grams then I can leave it unattended all night to resume the stretching and folding period in the morning these stretch and folds then I do the first one and then I'll leave it unattended all night long and then in the morning I'll do these two and that is effectively stretching this eight hour period longer I don't know like 10 12 hours 15 hours however long you need you can adjust that amount of sourdough starter bring it right down therefore slowing down that fermentation stretching out this fermentation period uh, so that it will last a longer amount of time that's the third customizable thing you can do to help yourself out if you need your sourdough to last that long unattended all this stuff comes down to practice and knowledge which are the same two things. Practice is knowledge and knowledge is practice. It's the same things. And that's why, as I said in the beginning of the video, it can be a little bit confusing and sound, sound a little bit complicated and a little bit too much to worry about. But remember, we are shoehorning my process into your day. And the reason it is my process is because it fits into my day okay so once you get a real good understanding of the sourdough process which i try and bring you in my videos and most certainly on my courses it's all about building the understanding of what you're doing so you can then go and do whatever you need to do creating your own sourdough loaf that fits into your own lifestyle instead of organizing your day around these things you need to be around you can slot them in to your day Wow. Listen, I hope this video have helped you out. If you have questions about it, okay, this is some heavy topic, yeah? This is some heavy stuff on my shoulders trying to transfer it to you. It's all very stressful trying to do that in the correct way that makes the most sense and is as thorough as possible. And if it's not, if there's questions pending in the back of your head, please put them in the comments box underneath and I will answer it. And uh, you might even find the answer there already. Somebody else might have asked it. But listen, thank you very much for hanging out with me every single week. I hope this helps you out on your quest for Wicked Sourdough at home. This, I think, is going to be the last sourdough video I'm going to do for a while because it's just... It takes a lot of preparation and a lot of me getting my head together to make sure that it comes across okay. So there's... Just let me take it easy for a bit and do some simpler ones, some more straightforward ones. That'd be awesome. Thank you very much for coming every single week. If you're brand new, please press that subscribe button. Click the thumbs up if this has helped you out. And I look forward to seeing you next week for another bread making tip. Bye bye.